Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. Oh my god. I make videos all about house plant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And in today's video, I thought I would take you through, oh, hello Yoli. I thought I would take you through some of the products slash just kind of like general items that I find make my life as a Oh, now she's having a drink. <laughs> Great timing. My life as a plant mum a lot easier and I hope to keep my collection happy. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So as always, these are in no particular order, but the first one that I want to talk about is actually a late entry to this list because I only came across it recently, but I am just totally in love with it and I felt like I needed to include it. So I was basically looking for something that would still allow light to pass into my room in the same way, but also kind of maximize my floor space because obviously I've got a lot of plants and I don't want to be tripping over them all the time, but I still want them to be getting good light. And I came across these kind of heavy duty shower shelves that stick onto glass and I'll put some clips of them in, but oh my goodness, they are just absolutely amazing and I wish I'd discovered them sooner. I've actually only got two at the moment, but I've just placed an order for about 12 more so that I can really optimise the light in my space and keep my plants happy. But yeah, I've read amazing reviews on them. They're just a cheap Amazon or relatively cheap Amazon buy. I was going to say everything that I talk about, I will link down in the description box below as well if anybody's interested. But yeah, so far I'm really happy and I honestly could not recommend them enough. And I think as well, because they're shower shelves, they do have inbuilt drainage. So, I mean, in theory, you could plant plants directly into them and they would still be able to drain. You probably obviously have to take them off to, to water, but they do lift off relatively easily. I was going to take one off and bring it over for this video and I was just a little bit scared that I might not be able to slot it back on. So I say relatively easily, maybe it's not relatively easily, but from everything that I've read, they don't damage the glass at all. You can just peel them off, give it a wipe over and it'll be fine. But they also have really good stick. And as I say, because they're transparent, they do just allow light to pass through in the way that you want it to. And it won't block out your room. So yeah, that's number one. And the second one, these are going to be in a random order because there's a mixture of products and things that I want to talk about. But this is something, again, that I really wish I'd discovered sooner. These are a slightly dirty pair of microfiber gloves. And when it comes to keeping your plant's foliage clean and free from dust and dirt, these are honestly an absolute lifesaver. I've tried so many things over the years. I've tried just kind of like normally dusting. I do use makeup brushes as well from time to time. So perhaps I should have included that. But these are just amazing. I literally, I mean, it's fairly self-explanatory, but I just put them on go around my plants obviously it's very important to make sure that you've pest checked prior to this because if you haven't then you could essentially be spreading pests from one plant to the other but dusting with these is just amazing and obviously dusting is so 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 important if your plants are covered in dust then it means they're not going to be able to photosynthesize effectively and even if you've got your plant in a really high light or a really good light spot they're not going to be able to absorb all of the light that you're giving them if that makes sense so yeah these are again i think an amazon buy i, I will as i say link everything below but my my life has changed since I've started using these. It's just made everything so much easier and I could be a little bit lazy when it came to dusting because it would take such a long time and I usually have to get cloths and dusters and all that sort of stuff and this just simplifies things so would highly recommend them. And then this next one I've spoken about before so many times and this is a product. This is the Liquid Gold Leaf Fertilizer and I use this for all of my plants and I honestly cannot rave about this stuff enough. If you watch my other videos, then you'll have heard me bang on about it so many times. It's such a fantastic fertilizer, but the thing that differentiates it from just kind of like your standard garden center fertilizer is the fact that this is made with soil health in mind. So it doesn't damage beneficial microbes. It doesn't harm living organisms in the soil. And it just really helps to support the plant and offer it, offer it the best in terms of nutrient absorbance, because that's something that a lot of shop-bought fertilizers are just not focused on. They're very focused on quick kind of dramatic growth that doesn't actually support the health of your plant. 
and this this really does and i yeah as i say i could speak all day about liquid gold leaf it is fantastic and it's completely organic it doesn't contain any nasty chemicals or anything that is going to do your plant any harm at all long term it is yeah it's just brilliant and i know i don't i don't think it ships worldwide currently but i know that there are more and more places that are starting to stock it over over the globe so yeah i'm sure there are probably other fertilizers out there that do a similar thing but this is this is my go-to i use it for all of my plants and it's amazing and the next one is so this is something that isn't like directly related to plant health this is more an aesthetic thing but it also saves you money which is always a good thing but something that i use on a very regular basis and i really really love is my glue gun and macrame cord i i basically revamp pretty much all of my plant pots like most of the ones that you can always see in shot are ones that are were originally nursery pots and i've just redecorated actually i can see one there that is not the case i did buy that one but with a lot of them, I just think buying buying pretty pots is so expensive and a lot of ceramic pots also don't come with drainage. So a lot of the time I'll just use my glue gun and my macrame cord. And sometimes I get fancy and I add things like ribbon and lace and stuff like that. But it's super easy to do. It saves you, if you've got lots of plants, it saves you so much money. And I also just really enjoy it. I love doing creative planty things and... I just think like it makes things look so nice and I mean okay it doesn't it doesn't really change anything in regards to the health of your plants but it saves you money so that you can invest in other things for your plants so yeah that is for me something that I would personally recommend you don't have to take that one uh, but the next one is live sphagnum moss and it's important to say live sphagnum moss that hasn't been treated with any preservatives or sterilizing chemicals and that is why again none of this is sponsored none of this video is sponsored i'm just talking about products that i love but soil ninja as a brand which are they are uk based but they have also just started trading in europe so keep your eye out i'm sure they're probably going to be coming to other places as well but their live sphagnum moss is absolutely amazing and it is on the whole my go-to for propagation i'll get a little bit out so that i can show you so yeah that is that is what it looks like it is absolutely gorgeous stuff and i literally i just love it and when i was at the last plant swap they actually had lots of microscopes and stuff like that set up there and we were able to look at it through the microscope and it was really interesting because obviously it hasn't been treated with any nasty chemicals there were lots of microscopic little beetles and stuff like that that are beneficial for your plants that i mean it sounds gross but actually you can't see them at all like you wouldn't even know they were there you can't you can't see them with the naked eye but obviously if your moss has been treated then that's that all of that good stuff is going to be killed off so it is the best thing to kind of like naturally replicate and mimic a plant's natural growing conditions and yeah i just think it's wonderful and i i highly recommend it uh but the next one is a sprayer bottle and again i think i got this off amazon the only con with this is that it isn't bigger you might be able to get bigger versions of this and if you can then i would definitely invest in a bigger version because it's i'm gonna have to make sure not to spray myself here it's kind of just like your normal sprayer but firstly the mist is a lot finer and it's also it's pretty much an aerosol sprayer so see what i mean it's kind of like a consistent flow of spray as opposed to just like targeting one area so i use this for misting my plants i use it for rehydrate well not fully rehydrating moss poles but just initially spraying them before i go in and water them just because it allows the moss to kind of open itself up to moisture and not be quite so hydrophobic so yeah i use it i use it for literally everything and i do also use it in combination with another thing that i'm going to talk about in a minute so i will tell you about that when we get there but I'm just going to, I've scattered things everywhere. I'm just going to go through in the order that I've got them here. But the next one's a little bit random, and this is just more of a makeshift thing. You probably already have it in your own home, but it is an oven tray or an oven grill. And I use this all of the time as part of my watering routine because if, because as I say, I've got a lot of plants that are potted in containers with drainage built in. And I, I really like doing my watering this way, but I will usually just get a washing up bowl and I'll put my oven grid across it. And that means that, especially if I'm using lovely fertilized water that I don't want to waste, 
I can pop my plants on top, I can water them, they can drain into the washing up bowl and collect the water and then this, yeah, this is just, I don't know, I really like using it and I find it makes my life a lot easier. It goes without saying because I know maybe slightly controversially I do reuse my water. Some people like once it's already passed through a plant will not reuse their water but I like like the products that I use along with it like liquid gold leaf and stuff like that. I like being able to keep that back and unless I'm having issues with a plant or unless I suspect that there's pests there I will just reuse it most of the time so this just makes it it makes it very easy and I really like doing it that way. But the next one is horticultural soap and I get this from Ladybird Plant Care and I've got a link for them that I'll pop down below because I get a few things actually that I'm going to speak about from them. And horticultural soap is just amazing if you're dealing with pests or you've got any issues that you just need to kind of like give your plant a proper clean up from like fungal stuff or other leaf damage that might need treating but you don't want to go down the chemical route and nowadays I'm, I'm personally trying to do things a lot more naturally with my collection I'm trying to just replicate things as they would be in nature as much as I possibly can and this doesn't contain anything nasty and it's only going to do your plants good so yeah I always have a bottle of this in the cupboard and I think it's just wonderful uh, and the next one might be like might seem quite obvious but it is plastic cups and containers and this is just firstly i think the most productive way of recycling like i don't go out and buy plastic cups and containers i just i pick them up wherever i go if i've been to a party or a festival or someone's house and they've got plastic cups i'll always say can i take those with me I mean, the same goes for like jars and stuff like that. I'm always asking like my neighbours, I let them know that this is something I use a lot and if they ever have any, please can I have them? But I use plastic cups for literally everything. I think this was originally a little pasta pot or something like that, but I use them for propagation, particularly moss propagation because I like to leave a little bit of water at the bottom. But the other thing I use them for is for hydrating my moss poles. I mean, I think pretty much every single moss pole that you'll see in my collection has got one of these on top and I just poke a little hole in the bottom and I fill them as and when I need to and it just drains down and it's kind of like slow release hydration so yeah I'm constantly using these and I honestly never throw any of them away. They're also amazing for creating kind of like a little prop box environment if you if you don't have big kind of prop boxes or you don't have the space for it Hummus tubs as well. I didn't bring one over to show you, but hummus tubs are also a very good way of doing this. But often if I'm, for example, doing seed germination or I've got some wet sticks that I want to propagate, I'll just lay whatever substrate I'm using on the bottom. I'll pop my thing in and I'll just cover it with cling film and that essentially creates its own little microclimate and I find it works really well. But the next one is the one that I was talking about using in combination with the sprayer bottle. And this is another liquid gold leaf product. It's called Photo Plus. And I honestly, because as you will know, if you watch my other videos, I moved here to my new flat about three and a half months ago now, I think. And the majority of my plants had been kept in a conservatory before that. So obviously they were used to fantastic light. And coming here, although yes, I've got good light, it is nothing compared to what they were used to before. And I was really prepared for a lot of my plants to go downhill, for them to kind of acclimate very badly and go, oh my God, this isn't this isn't what we're used to. And this stuff, so basically what it does, it's a, it's a foliar spray. So I pop it into my spray bottle and I go around and I spritz my plants with it. It basically helps to naturally encourage photosynthesis in plants. And this doesn't mean that you can keep a plant in pitch black darkness and this is going to be a replacement. Some people do refer to it as sunshine in a bottle, but obviously you shouldn't ever keep a plant in complete darkness but it basically means that it's going to maximize the amount of light that your plants are able to absorb based on what they're receiving so for example if you have a really dark space or it's the middle of winter and you're only able to afford to run a couple of grow lights here and there then using this can just really help your plants to get more out of what they're already getting basically so yeah i i actually got this got this bottle before i moved house and I thought to myself, I'm going to save it until the move, just because I think that's probably when I'm going to be needing it. And touch all of the wood. I haven't really had any acclimation issues since I've moved here. And obviously before it was like a glass roof and constant light. And here it's not. 
and I really do put it down to this. I think it is the most fantastic stuff. And also over the winter months, it just means that you're able to help to keep your plants growing to the same level or a similar level as they would be during growing season, which is pretty amazing. So yeah, would highly recommend, absolutely love it. And I've spoken about the next one very recently in a video on biological pest control, but predatory mites honestly have, <laughs> without being dramatic, have absolutely changed my life. As I said earlier in this video, I'm trying to do things more naturally with my collection now. I don't want to be throwing lots of chemicals onto my plants or into the soil. And these just help to keep everything under control. Like, even if I'm not struggling with pests, I will still use the sachets as a preventative measure. And they've just been absolutely amazing. These ones here are for spider mites. These ones are for thrips. As I say, I did make a full kind of in-depth video on it. So I will link that down below. But I really, really wish that I'd known about predatory mites sooner and I'd known how to use them sooner. Because initially when I first tried them, my experience... I, I just didn't really know what I was doing. I just kind of threw a few sachets here and there and I expected everything to magically get better and I hadn't really done the research and done the trial and error to kind of back that up. But now I feel very confident with them and I absolutely love them and I've got them scattered about absolutely everywhere in my home. So yeah, would definitely, if you aren't already, recommend looking into biological pest control. I've got another product, in fact, I'll do the other product now because the other one that I was going to speak about that I adore and could not live without now is nematodes and there's not a lot to show they look like this but these ones here that I've got are specifically for treating fungus gnats these are scarred fly nematodes but you can also get them for outdoor plants like if you're battling with slugs or anything like that you can get a different type of nematode to tackle them but for me because I live with 300 plus house plants having damp soil a lot of the time is essentially a breeding ground for fungus gnats and no one likes having loads of fungus gnats in their home i have tried pretty much everything under the sun to get rid of them over the years and this has been the only thing that's been consistently effective so yeah wish i knew about it sooner and we'll link it down below highly recommend and the next one, again, I didn't bring it through because it's quite large, but I'll put some clips in, is my Levoit humidifier. I, I've i tried so many humidifiers in the time that I've had plants, and this one has just been so consistent. It really, I mean, it delivers really high levels of humidity. You don't have to set it super high if you don't want to, but if you've got quite a big space to fill or you've got a lot of plants and you're struggling to keep the humidity high enough for them, it is just fantastic. And you can put it on different settings. So for example, I've got mine when the humidity drops below 60%, it will automatically come on. So it, I don't really need to do a lot apart from occasionally fill the tank of water. And it's just made my life so much easier because again, since I've moved here, Humidity is one thing that I've really, really struggled with because before the kind of lowest it would drop was about 65, 70%. And for me, that was not a lot. And here, I think if I didn't run any form of humidifier or I wasn't putting anything in place, I think the humidity would probably be about 40 to 50%, which with a lot of tropical plants is just not ideal for them. So that is amazing. I adore that. Also, along with humidifiers as well, because I do get this question a lot, is can you just use normal diffusers, like essential oil diffusers for humidity? And the answer is yes, I do this as well. Like if if I don't want to be running my big Levoit humidifier, then often I will just put on little diffusers around my place. Like I've got one that I can see at the moment over there. That one runs consistently. I just fill it up every day. And yeah, they're not super expensive to run. They help to keep your plants happy. They help to keep the maintenance low. And yeah, because I've tried a few, that the Levoit one is personally one that I would recommend. And while I'm talking about things that I don't actually have in front of me, the other thing that I forgot to add to this list, and I can't believe I forgot to add it, is cabinets. Like cabinets are something that, again, I wish I'd discovered sooner. They don't have to be ridiculously expensive. The one that is now my propagation cabinet that I've got in my bedroom, I got for £20 on eBay and I just converted it into a grow cabinet and it has kept so many of my plants super happy. It is the best environment for tropical plant propagation. I, I absolutely adore it. And also the one here that I've got behind me, this is an Ikea Millsbow cabinet and my friend Emma actually 
bless her heart, got it for me as a combined birthday and moving in present when I first moved here. But she got this one off a Facebook marketplace group and she didn't pay full price for it. So although it was a little bit more expensive than the other one, it wasn't ridiculous. But yeah, a cabinet environment basically just creates lots of natural humidity, great light, assuming you use the right grow lights, which I will speak about in a minute. Good air circulation as well, getting good fans in there is really important, but it essentially, again, helps to replicate their natural conditions in the best possible way. And I, on the whole, have insane growth from my plants in my cabinet compared to the ones that are not in the cabinet. So yeah, that is definitely, definitely something that I would recommend. But then again, if you can't, if you, like for example, if you don't have the space for a cabinet, you can't afford a cabinet, or you just don't want to get a cabinet, there are other things you can do as well. You can obviously create big propagation boxes, propagation bins, and make like a little cabinet for your plants. Or, and this is like probably the easiest way, you can just get some sandwich bags and wrap them around your plants and essentially create a little microclimate in there that is kind of the same as having it in a cabinet. But personally, I think having a cabinet is easier. But something that I almost again forgot to talk about is grow lights. And I know I've done videos specifically on grow lights before and how they work and what I would recommend. But for me, the grow lights that I primarily use nowadays and I've got in all of my cabinets are the mother grow bars. And honestly, they are just the most fantastic grow lights I have ever used. I'll link them down below, but I use them in a cabinet. I use them out of the cabinet as well. They, they can either be horizontal like I've got there or they can be upright and I'll put a clip in of that. And they just produce the most incredible light. They're really durable. They're really resilient. They have a really long lifespan. And the thing that I love about them as well is if you if you have them for like 15 years and things start going wrong, you don't actually have to buy a whole new grow light. You can just buy the LED strip to go back in them. And so it really, I mean, like they're very cheap to run. And although they do have potentially more of an up, I mean, definitely more of an upfront cost than for example, halogen or compact fluorescent. All of my grow lights that I've got to support 300 houseplants cost me less than 60p a day to run. So I, yeah, I honestly could not recommend them enough. They are fantastic. And the next one is probably going to seem incredibly obvious to pretty much all of you, but a good pair of scissors or pruning shears is literally imperative if you want healthy plants and you want successful propagation because if you're using kind of like a fairly average blunt pair of scissors and you're not able to get clean cuts, whether you're pruning or propagating, it can lead to so many issues and set your plants up for much bigger issues long term. So the ones that I use for kind of like my thinner stemmed plants, these are actually textile scissors and they're super sharp. They've got a very good cut on them. And if I'm working with a plant that's got a much thicker stem and I'm trying to chop and crop, for example, I will use a really sharp, clean pair of pruning shears. Also, on the note of them being clean, this again wasn't going to include, but hydrogen peroxide, I know I'm saying that I'm going a lot less chemical nowadays, but I do still use hydrogen peroxide to sterilise all of my scissors, all of my blades, all of my pruning shears, anything I do that is going to come into contact with my plants prior to using them, just because bacteria can, it can cause lots of nasty things and lead to pretty severe issues. So that is something that I always do. But yes, a very sharp, very clean pair of scissors or pruning shears is very important. And then, oh, is this finally? I think this might be the last one. I've, I've obviously got more, like I could probably talk about more, but some of them might just be, I don't know, might just be obvious. Like for example, I always stock up on nursery pots and all that sort of stuff, but like that yeah, might, might just be obvious. Um, but the importance of using a good quality soil, and again, I'm using Soil Ninja because that's that's the brand that I personally love. But when you're looking for a good quality soil, the most important thing to take into consideration is that you're using a living soil that hasn't been, again, similar to the sphagnum moss, treated with any nasty preservatives or chemicals because so much of the shop bought soil that you buy in fact over here in the uk pretty much all of the garden center soil that you can access is 
treated with lots of nasty things that are not going to do good things for your plants long term. You want to think about soil microbes and living organisms within the soil that are going to help to support and encourage your plant's health. And I know quite a few of you have asked about, like had questions on things like microbes. I have got a video coming on this soon, so I will I'll link it down below once it's up. But yeah, I, I love using soil ninja stuff and I, I usually get their base mix and then I will mix in anything else that I want, such as bark, horticultural charcoal, grit, sand, lacquer, whatever I'm using. But that is that is my go to. So, yeah, I am not quite sure how many things that was, but those are all things that I, I definitely use, I would say, every few days at least in my plant care routine. And on the whole, my plants are really happy. So, yeah, if anyone's got any questions about any of the products, then let me know down below. But as I say, I will link all of them in the description box below. But I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video.